Matthew chapter 8 verse 18. Are you there? Little say. X. Eight. Detero chapter eight. From verse eight into twenty-four. I'm reading from verse eight. It says, "Now when Simon saw that." The spirit was given through the laying on of apostles' hands. He offered them money, saying, Give me this authority and power too, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your money be destroyed along with you, because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart, motive or purpose is not right before God. So repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bound by sin. But Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me, both of you, so that nothing of what you have said will come upon me. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want us to understand that we cannot go close to God unless we understand who he is. We can still claim him. And people can still attest to that. But it takes discerning spirit to understand the people from God. Where we are reading here, you could see Peter try to address this man. Because of his purpose or motives. I was realizing that this man was, was not wrong. I mean, if he have met some people, if he was not wrong. They could still collect his money But when Peter was connecting with God, he this, he, look, he didn't look on the money. He looked at the motives behind his utterance. And he realized that he had to tell him to repent. Tell him to repent. This is the best message that have been preached for years. Our challenges today is motives behind our actions. So whatever you do, if your motive does not glorify God, is sin. Your motive, if it's not right before God, is sin. So that's what we need to repent. We we repent our actions because our motives are not glorifying God. That's all. If we say repent, we are talking about 
What is your motive? When you do this, this man looked at himself. He was a witch. And everybody believed that he was a power of God by then. I was asking myself why people could not discern that he was not power of God. But people believed him. And uh, to extend that when Philip came to preach the word, he had no option except to repent. But he was still there. Our challenge is today, we don't know each other before we were like, you know, we understand each other, but we don't know each other. Even Philip had that problem. He, he just said, this man repented. It's part of me. And this man, if Philip might have continued with him, Philip was in danger. Philip but thank God when he realized that there's another ministry that was needed. He called Peter from Jerusalem. That's what we are reading about. Many times we are connected with wrong motives. And we end up responding those wrong motives correctly. But before God, we are sinning. This man said, I can see your actions. And your reason of doing this. You, want, you still want to be in a higher position to rule people in a wrong way. When I read Job 42, 1 verse 6, I was surprised when Job showed that his utterances were wrong. The Bible says he was hearing God speaking. But he reached a level where he said, now I can see God. I repent. In other words, he was limited and also his revelations were limited. And this makes his utterances to be a sin. He end up says, I repent before God. All my utterances that I have said were wrong. You know, Job taught me that though the Bible say he has never seen when he was under temptation, he taught me that a man must never beat his chest. Because if you know God by your revelation, you are limited to other people's revelation. Tell neighbor, if you know God by your revelation, you are still limited to other people's revelation. He, he had God. He could hear God. But that day, his eyes were open. He saw God. And the Bible says he repents. And he says, it means all that I have said were wrong. Can I tell you this? We must never conclude that we are right until God says so. Tell you, you must never conclude that you are right until God says so. So that's what Job was saying. Job was saying I know I have not done anything and I spoke as a Christian who knows myself. But the day he saw God, he saw he was dead. He was not supposed to have spoken any word. If we read Matthew 5 verse 4 in Amplified Bible, Matthew 5 verse 4, Matthew 5 verse 4, Mateo I, want, 5, I want to 4. read it in Amplified Bible. Amplified Bible. 
you will understand that we are taking things for granted. Even Bible, we are taking it for granted. Blessed, meaning forgiven and refreshed by God's grace, are those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Many times, Anchi. we love to justify ourselves. I mean, we love to say, sorry Lord, it's finished. Like like 1 John, John, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. 1 John, chapter Confess 1, verse 8 and 9. Is faithful and just, he'll forgive you. Simple as that, we just say it. But you find that there's a scripture that says, you, must mourn. You, you know what's the meaning of mourning? Tears must come out. You must regret that you have done wrong. I don't think you can go back to that particular scripture. Many times when we say we are repenting, we do it in a very simple way. I'm sorry, Lord, I'm Open sorry. And it ends there. I mean, if we fear God, let's move. If we have done sin, it means we know we will never go back to that sin. Do you know that... Uh, because we are in these last days. Justifying every wrong thing we are doing. If we reach a level whereby no one can tell us that we are wrong, we are doomed. If we reach a level where no one can tell you that you are wrong, you are finished. I don't know if you're hearing me. We must mourn. You know, I was just looking at the life of David. After he took, he took, he took Bathsheba. I mean, the way he justified himself. In, in his position, no one will know that he has done wrong. And no one could approach him and say done wrong. That's why when the prophet that is approaches him, he, he went by a parable way and say, what about this? He judged himself. Not understanding is what he did. Many times we are judging people on the same kind of things we have done. This is the time to say, no, 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 I want to go to heaven. If I do mistakes, I must cry tears. I might be known everywhere, but if I do mistakes, I must cry because there's another one somewhere there who's watching. If you believe, shout hallelujah. There's a burden of sin. You know, last time I was telling you about sin is our enemy. A, a, a burden of sin. Sin makes you to think and rethink. And it catches you, you can move forward. You can just do it for people, but deep down you know you are wrong. That's what I say, my friend. You must repent. This is your message. Let's read Luke 13, 1 to 3. Luke 13, 1 to 3. We see Jews complaining to Jesus. They came to him and say, the way other people have been killed, that way by Herod was very, very wrong. You know, I was reading there, I was surprised to find <inaudible> Jesus answering them in a very simple way. <inaudible> Jesus said, unless you repent, <inaudible> you'll face the same fate. <inaudible> you know, Jesus didn't say, 
Unless you repent, you'll face the challenges they face. You, you, you will die likewise. You know, our ends means more than where we are. If now a man of God just fall and die, everybody will question. I don't know if you are hearing that. If you are a Christian, you just, something will just happen to you and you die. Everybody will have a question about it. But when you read here, you realize that Jesus never wastes time. And you say, if you don't repent, you will die. Jesus never wastes time. And you say, if you don't repent, you will die. And you say, if you don't repent, you are about to die that way. Even you, you will die the same. Look here. Let's stop justifying ourselves. If things are wrong, we are under judgment. If we carry on justifying ourselves, we are finishing ourselves. This is what we are doing now. Everybody want to be somebody. Not knowing the end that is coming. Repent. Repent. Change your mind. Change how you do your change things. Change what you are doing. If what you are doing does not glorify God. Can I say it again? Change what you are doing what you are doing and the manner of doing it if what you are doing does not glorify God I can still come here and preach and you find God is not happy with me but you are seeing me as a preacher I have to deal with myself deal with yourself deal with yourself, deal with yourself. It's useless to hold the Bible or if you know Bible. that you are wrong and you're not dealing with it. I mean, your end will be shameful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As your neighbor say, my friend. Can you just change and repent? Change your mind. 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 To, to be rebellious is easy. It's when you reach a higher level. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes, can be the one that can bring judgment to us. I don't know if you're hearing me. As the says, is there anything wrong that you are doing and people that don't know you are doing? Just, just ask your neighbor. Just ask your neighbor. Can you just ask your neighbor? Is there anything you are doing and people that don't know that you are doing and which is against God. Be careful. Let me show you another scripture. All right, look at this 1 John 5 verse 17. It says all wrongdoing is sin and sin that is not confessed and repent will lead to death. Let's touch, let's underline wrongdoing. Okay, let me give you an example of what you don't know. Can you all look at me on what I want to tell you? I'm giving this. If the Bible says all wrongdoing is sin, if all wrongdoing is sin, what is wrong? That is called sin. I mean, if you can see that Christians are led by the Holy Spirit, that is the only sin that we are, we are facing today. Is when we are not led by the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you are hearing me. You see, wrongdoing is disobedience. 
Wrongdoing is what? Disobedience. If now I just want to do things because I'm able to do that, it's wrongdoing. Can I say it again? The sin, Christians can't fornicate. Stealing, Christians can't steal. Christians can't kill. But there is wrongdoing. Christians can do wrong. And if they cannot confess their wrongdoing, that wrongdoing leads to death. I don't know if you are hearing me. How many of you are hearing me? If you are hearing me, say I hear. Can I tell you this? Like you are a Christian here. You can't steal. You can't fornicate. You can't lie. But there is wrongdoing. Your obedience matters a lot. Who is leading you? If Holy Spirit speaks with you, do what you are doing, do it. If you are just doing because other people are doing, you are in danger, you are doing wrong. It will lead you to sin. I will just remember Paul. The Bible says he wanted to go somewhere. Holy Spirit said no. He pushed to go somewhere. Holy Spirit no, don't go there. What if Holy Spirit didn't say it? Automatically, is in wrongdoing. You know, I was thinking about you pastors when I read this. My question is, who told you to have a ministry there? The Bible says, people in the last day, they will say, I cast demons, I prophesy. Who told you to prophesy that word? It's wrongdoing. Wrongdoing is what you do without the connection of the Holy Spirit or leading of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you're hearing me. Can you ask your neighbor and say, my friend, is there any wrongdoing you are justifying? Because sometimes as Christians, we justify it. I can give an example of what, <laughs> of what I'm talking about. I was telling Mama, I said, this issue of going to Israel, this thing I was supposed to have done it a long time ago. I mean, people are just going to Israel. You are still going to Israel. Yeah. Once, once you have a TV, you get that people go to Israel. Going to Israel is not wrong. But who started it? Not me. Who started it? I was not telling you to do that. And what is the motive there? And what is the motive there? You know, all the people that I met, they were saying, okay, you can make money out of going to Israel. How you are Israel? That is the motive now. So if I'm going there, it's the motive. And if that is the motive, it does glorify God. I don't know if you're hearing me. I'm just giving an example by me. Can you just ask your neighbor? What is the wrongdoing you are justifying? Not long I was saying, you know, any being, any action, any movement, we need to hear from God. For you to come and preach about this, for you to come and sit there, for you not to go to that church you are here today, you need to hear God. If not, you are vulnerable to Satan. You are vulnerable to Satan. If there's something Aye. called death, it means you can die. You can be attacked. Do you know why Satan attacks? He can see you doing wrong, wrong. You have failed. If you fail from grace, you are in sin. If you are in sin, you are under Satan. Anything can happen. You know, it's easy to go to hell or go oh, to no, heaven. No, no, no. 
if we can ask you here, it will be easy for you to tell us you are going to heaven. Even if you lie, but deep down you know. Because your motives judges you. Tell your neighbor, your motives judges you. Judges you. There are some people who are hearing me today. I want the Holy Spirit to guide you in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. How many of you want to be led by the Holy Spirit? You want to be led by the Holy Spirit. This year, God will guide you. You will never fail in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let's look at this. I mean, situation that Jesus faced in Luke 5. Verse 17 to 26. We know this. Luke 5. Luke 5. You know, today, I'm beginning to understand that many things we are facing is because of our wrongdoings. Yes. 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 I'm sure you hear that. If you're not under grace, you're what? You're you're no. Look at this story that Jesus If we read from verse 17, we can see the place was full. And Jesus, the power of it from him was there to heal them. And the Bible says they find a way to Jesus. But it was impossible. But when they lower this paralyzed man, when Jesus looked at him, he addressed the root cause. Jesus was a man who deal with root cause. He looked at the root cause. He realized the man was paralyzed because of sin. So he spoke publicly and said, your sin are forgiven. And from there, people who heard him say, ah, this guy, now is crazy now. Jesus was addressing the root cause that has created paralysis. Because our wrongdoings gives us bad consequences. So now, if you come to Jesus, so you won't you hide, hide it. it. You will speak the problem straight that has caused the fruit we are seeing. Many times we are concentrating on the fruit of the problem. You have headache. You have got running stomach. But the problem that has caused that is, was something that someone can just deal with it just to repent and to be forgiven. We leave that until punishment comes. You know, like pastors here, they are dealing with problems that you people, you have not exposed the cause of the problem. Can you see pastor praying for you? Dealing with the problem. But hiding what you have done to bring that problem. I don't know if you are hearing me. And whereas you could deal with this problem before pastor deal with it. Before pastor deal with it. Before by exposing it to the one who sees all. 
Now you have to be Chano. prayed for. Pastor, worry why that thing is happening. Or people rejoice when they see a miracle. But most of the time, you can still go back to the same thing. If pastor cannot address the root cause. That's why Jesus will say, That's why Jesus okay, go, see si no more. Pila. Because he knew that sin is the one that causes problems, brings death. There are some people who are here today. You cannot wait for altar call. You know your life before God. You can repent before someone say repent. I mean, how can you hide for many years? I don't know if you're hearing me. So I, I'm beginning to understand this. There was a time where I told my mother that I, let's drop a service of Friday. <laughs> because this service is like we are doing it for money. Because the moment when the Holy Spirit began to show you something, if you act on it, it works very well for you. I don't know if you're hearing me. And you'll be surprised the money you are searching you will never get. You'll be surprised you are trying to do something to get something and you can't get it. Many times we are busy doing things and people think we are moving well and other people are admiring us. But when we search deep, there is If God says it's wrong, repent from it. Because you can be so much active and you find that it was not your time to be active. I don't know if you are hearing me. This is the time of doing the work of God with conscience or serving God with right conscience. This is the time of following God with right mind. Believing that God is there. If not, you justify yourself and God will leave you to your power. I want to pray for some people here today. If you are hearing me from today, any step you take will be from the Holy Spirit. I say will be from the Holy Spirit. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Can you shake somebody and say, what about your advices? What about your plans? What about what you are thinking? Is it from the Holy Spirit? If it's from not from the Holy Spirit, it's a wrong doing. Repent. And the Lord will help you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Because we can still justify ourselves until judgment day. You know, uh, uh, maybe of my age, I can tell you that. After I've been preaching, preaching, I realized that. I, one day I said it, I said, I wish people can learn from me. Because whether you get the money, you become blessed in another way. There's no peace in that. You can drive all cars. Like one day I was saying, Mama, which car do you want? I don't want a car again. There's nothing that satisfies except to know that you are clean with God. It's so satisfying. You know, even when you sleep, you know when the rapture comes, you go home. But if not, the affairs of this world I mean will catch you up. You'll be surprised to find that you are 
looking at yourself, judging others, compare yourself with others because of what you are having, which does not make anything because at the end you will live this. I don't know if you are hearing me. So this is how when there is a wrongdoing, you can really confess it and live it. I'm just saying this to all of you. That it's just the waste of all the time to acquire this, acquire that in a wrong way. But if you do it in a right way, there can still be a delay while you are going there. You are doing it in a right way. There's a delay, delay, delay. delay. but the Lord knows he calculated your steps and he knows that no one will stop you, you will reach there. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you are hearing me today, can I prophesy you by declaring this word to you? From now on, the steps that you are taking will be of God leading you. You will never fail. I say you will never fail. I say you will never fail. I say you will never fail. Because many times when we fail, remember we have Jesus who died for us. When we sin, we have him to repent. Let us not wait for people to tell us. I don't know if you are hearing me. Let us not wait for people to tell us. To tell us that you have done wrong. This is the problem. Confess it. He is faithful. He wants to forgive you. Repent from that problem. You know I am concluding my message by telling this. What will take many of us to the end is this. It's a wrong thing that we cultivate it. We cultivate it. As long as it makes us to live the way we want to live. As long as it's wrong, but because it makes us to live the life we desire, but we cultivate it. That thing is the one that will take you to your end. Many of us, we have got a tree that is not needed. We planted it. But because it has got fruits that we feed, we feed ourselves with it, we cultivate it, we nurture it, as long as, as, long as no one can tell us anything. As long as we are eating, it's only when the end comes. <laughs> And people say, ah, we thought this person was a Christian. Others say, you went to, to hell. Went to heaven. And heaven say, we don't know that person. Can we repent? God loves you. You can repent from this wrongdoing. You can repent from this wrongdoing. How I many of you want to repent from wrongdoing? That's the we pray. Because can you see, you are here and you are justifying yourself. Justifying yourself. You are just justifying yourself. No one can tell you anything, but you just justify yourself. At the end, people question you. And say, ah, he went to heaven. But ever say, we don't, we don't know that person. Another thing is, uh, which I want to tell you, because all of us, all of us, we have, you know, assignment in front of us. If you are given a bigger assignment, you will be judged on that assignment. If it's small, also, you'll be judged on this. Let me give you something that uh, I can give an example. Can I give an example? 
I'll give an example by now because we have prophets here. I was, you know, there are some prophets that, you know, the moment when you want to prophesy, the angel comes and stands in front of you. I was with Titus, he was telling me that I'll see everything, but I'll be shown what to speak. As a heaven is really watching us. I'm sure you understand that. I said heaven is really watching us. If now God can go to a prophet that way, what about a Christian? I'll just give you an example. If God now can just say, talk about this, talk about this. What about Christian now? Who can see anything? I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Amen. We, we are really, really doomed. If we want to justify everything, or taking everything as it is, the way we want it, whereas God, whereas God is watching us. The eyes of the Lord are on the faithful. Tell me about the eyes of the Lord are on the faithful. You can lift up your hands and ask God to forgive any wrongdoing. Prayer. Ask God to forgive any wrong Oh, Father. Many times we are doing wrong. As God wrongdoing. Oh, Father God, forgive us any wrongdoing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.